The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will heed my voice. So there shall be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. I remember that was the first line of my first sermon as a new pastor when I arrived in Comanche. I couldn't decide if it was ironic or fitting, or maybe a little bit of both. So let me start by saying I am a shepherd, a pastor to a flock. That's where that word comes from, pastor. And God called me to be a pastor or a shepherd, so that means I have a flock. But Jesus is the good shepherd. And you notice as we go through this gospel reading, more and more the emphasis is not just on shepherd, but on good. He's not like the bad shepherds. He is the good shepherd. And, of course, any shepherd becomes more and more good by becoming more and more like the good shepherd, like Jesus. And he helps us to be more good and more like Jesus. So let us help one another be more good and more like Jesus. In the Gospels, of course, Jesus uses a number of vivid images to describe himself, to help people understand better who he is, and thus to find faith in him and trust him as Lord and Savior. And this is particularly the case in St. John's Gospel, where Jesus invokes creative ways of using the divine name, I am, about himself in a descriptive way. In that Gospel account, Jesus says, most directly, before Abraham was, I am. And we know that people got the message because it tells us they picked up rocks to stone him for blasphemy. And they didn't believe that he really was, I am. But he also invoked other examples. He tells his disciples, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the true vine. I am the door, I am the gate for the sheep, and also, of course, I am the good shepherd. This is our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, as we hear described in the letter to the Hebrews. He is one with the Father, who saw us like helpless sheep, scattered, wandering, sheep without a shepherd, And so he was moved with compassion. He came to seek and save the lost sheep. He's the one who left the 99 back on the hills just to go look for that one that wandered away. By the way, that's you. That's me. Forever establishing the value of one person and the divine Father's will that none should ever perish. Biblical scholar F.B. Mayer wrote, He has a shepherd's heart, beating with a pure and generous love that counted not his own lifeblood too dear a price to pay for our ransom. He has a shepherd's eye that takes in the whole flock and misses not even one poor sheep that wandered away on the mountain cold. He has a shepherd's faithfulness, which will never fail or forsake, leave us comfortless, nor flee when the wolf is coming. He has a shepherd's strength, 
So he is well able to deliver us from the jaw of the lion or the paw of the bear. He is a shepherd's tenderness. No lamb so tiny that he will not carry it. No saint so weak that he will not gently lead. No soul so faint that he will not give it rest. His gentleness makes him great. But there's more, of course. The good shepherd did lay down his life for the sheep. Now, since the beginning of human history, religious practice has decreed the opposite, that a lamb should give up his life for the shepherd. The shepherd would bring his lamb to the temple, the shrine, the sanctuary, lean on the lamb's head with his weight and confess his own faults, transgressions, sins, and then the lamb would be slain and its blood would flow out, a life for a life. And every time I see a gentle little lamb, it almost moves me to tears, just the innocence, the, the helplessness, the vulnerability. I can't imagine actually doing it. But then it speaks volumes about the gravity of sin and the value of life and redemption. So now what irony we see. Now the shepherd gives up his life for the lamb that he calls his own. Isaiah says he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The story is about the death of the shepherd. St. Peter explained further, He himself bore our sins on the tree, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds... You have been healed. He died for sin. The obvious sins, murder, theft, adultery, as well as the secret hidden sins, selfishness and pride, and the way they manifest themselves in the little everyday transgressions of life. He himself bore our sins in his own body on the cross. This was sin's final cure. The natural way of looking at the cross, to try to make sense of it all, is to say that man was so bad and God was so mad that someone had to pay. This is what we end up with if we forget about the Incarnation. But it was not anger that led Christ to be crucified. It was love. This is lost upon those cults that only focus on judgment. The crucifixion is behind Jesus' self-description as the good shepherd. God loves us so much that he took himself upon himself, our guilt, as if it were his own. He internalized all of the hurt, the wound, the sin, and healed it in his body that absorbed the consequence of sin, which is death. What did God say? Remember. On the day which you eat of it, you shall surely die. When it was over, Jesus said, it is finished. There's nothing left for us to do but to enter into forgiving acceptance by leaving our old sins behind in the bathwater of our baptism and to enter what God has made possible by accepting his forgiveness. The shepherd in the Middle East goes out in front of the sheep And they follow because they hear his voice and they've learned to trust him. No force, no fierce dogs nipping at their heels, only a well-known voice urging them on to the safety of the fold. And when we go astray, he calls us and listens for the slightest sounds of life. And he hears the faintest cry. And if he hears nothing at all, he waits. He doesn't give up or go away. Sometimes our discomfort is God's doing. Sometimes he hounds us a bit, hems us in. He thwarts our dreams and foils our best laid plans. He frustrates our hopes. 
He waits until we know that nothing else will ease our pain. Nothing will make life worth living except his presence. And when we turn to him, there he is to greet us, as he has been all along. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I lack nothing. But you might say, why would he really want me? He obviously knows me, the real me. He knows my wandering, my sin, my long habits of giving in and yielding to temptation. I'm certainly not good enough, not really sorry enough for my sins to make a difference. I'm unable to keep it out of my life. Our waywardness doesn't have to be explained to God. He's never surprised, really, by anything we do. He sees everything, past, present, and future, in a single glance. What is, what could have been, what would have been, apart from our sinful choices. He sees into the dark corners and crannies of our hearts and knows everything there is to know about us. But what he sees only draws out his love, in spite of any transgression. There's no deeper motivation in God than love. It is his nature to love. He can do no other, for as John says, God is love. There's no more descriptive word. There's no more profound lesson than this. He is the one thing that we need. The word shepherd carries with it thoughts of tenderness and security and provision. Yet it really means nothing if we cannot say, the Lord is my shepherd. What a difference that little word makes, my. It makes all the difference in the world. It means I can have all of God's attention all the time, just as though I'm the only one. I may be a part of a flock, but I am one of a kind, and so are you. It's one thing to say the Lord is a shepherd. It's another to say the Lord is my shepherd. This is the faith that saves us and brings us home. May each of you this day turn anew to Jesus Christ as the shepherd and bishop of your souls and follow his voice wherever he leads. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.